Mark chapter 5, we have come to Mark 5. Our study today will be in the first 20 verses. One of my favorite characters to think about, this man that we know as Legion, and actually it's better to say the man formerly known as Legion, and you'll understand why in the study. Chapter 5, verse 1, would you read along with me, please? They went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. Some of your translations will say Gadarenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain, for he had often been chained hand and foot, but tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, and what follows here is a demon's prayer. What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? Swear to God that you won't torture me. Wouldn't it have been funny if Jesus would have said, okay, I swear to me. (laughs) For Jesus had said to him, come out of this man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus. There is a whole lot of begging going on in this story. The demons begged Jesus, Send us among the pigs. Allow us to go into them. He gave them permission, and the evil spirits came, came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake where, and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons, sitting there, dressed in and highlight this, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man, and they told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him but said, Go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. Father, it's never fun to talk about demons. But this is the most comprehensive account of demons and demon possession that we have in our Bibles. So speak to our hearts. You brought every single man and woman here because you wanted to touch their hearts. Give us ears to hear and hearts to respond. I pray, Father, if there's even one in this service or anybody coming to the third service next, if they don't know you, if they're not yet born again, show them the intent of the devil in their lives and then ask them to be yours tell them that you can be dressed and seated in your right mind all we have to do is say yes to jesus lord i pray as is the case with our man legion i pray that the result will be fruitful ministry for your glory we love you god we're grateful for all you've done bless this time change our lives For your glory, we pray these things in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. Something you didn't know. Mick Jagger, Keith Richards were Christian songwriters. Really, they were. Listen. They co-wrote a song called You Can't Always Get What You Want. Here's part of the chorus. You can't always get what you want, but if you try sometime, you'll find you get 
what you need. That's exactly what happens to the man formerly known as Legion in our study today. Now, Legion to me is funny. And it's not funny that he was demon-possessed, and we'll talk about what a miserable life that he was living until Jesus set him free. But the reason that he's interesting to me is because he's just so different. There's no other character like him in our New Testament. I always think of, and this is only going to work for some of you who are a little older like I am, but I always think of Ernest T. Bass from The Andy Griffith Show. Ernest T. Bass would be running around uncontrollable, always falling in love with his precious Rowena. And the way he would get people's attention is he just throw rocks through their windows. He went to Rowena's house. You know how they throw rocks up to get their attention? Well, he just threw a big rock all the way through, and they had to take him to jail. He had no filter. He just did what he felt like doing. Well, that was the case in an evil sense with this man formerly known as Legion. As I said, it's the most comprehensive account of demon worship or demon possession that we have in our Bibles. And it's interesting, but again, I want to repeat something I said in my prayer. It's not fun to talk about this. We take such a cavalier approach to the demonic world in the Western church. We bind them and we shout at them and we command them to do things. And they laugh. By meeting this man, Legion, today, the Lord will show you a different side, not only of demon possession, but also the only answer to demon possession that exists. Verse 1 says, They went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes, or the Gerardines. Now, let me start this morning by making the obvious statement. And this is from our study last week. They made it to the other side. You remember our study last time? They went out, and there was this furious weather squall. Jesus said, let's go to the other side. He and his disciples in a boat. There were other boats with them. And in the middle of the lake, a lake all of those fishermen, those experienced fishermen knew every inch of, came this furious storm. Jesus was asleep. They were worried they were going to drown. And you remember, they cried out, don't you care if we drown? They questioned God's care for them and his goodness toward them. They questioned his power. Remember, the things they'd seen are things that would have convinced most of us, if not all of us, that Jesus, we were okay as long as we were with Jesus. I challenged you last week to sort of maybe get in the boat with Jesus and take a nap sometimes. Knowing that you're okay with him when you're in your own storms. Now, I also told you last week that I believe that the storm was satanically inspired. Jesus rebuked the storm in the same way he rebukes the demons. It's the same word in Greek. But this study demonstrates why the storm came up. What was Satan's angle? He didn't want Jesus on the other side. You see, verse 10, verse 17 in this study both indicate that Satan had a stronghold in this area that was largely populated by Gentiles. There were a few Jews scattered in and around the the ten cities. But it was, by and large, a Gentile population. And Satan had a stronghold All of that to say he did not want Jesus to get to the other side. And verse 1 says they made it. All we have to do is be with Jesus and we'll always get to the place he wants us to be. Now we know with exact certainty where this event occurred. We could actually go to Israel today and stand on this place. There's only one place on the borders of the Sea of Galilee with a cliff steep enough to be this place. So we could go and we could have a great Bible study right there about this. And as Matthew calls it, the Gadarenes, they were the location of the ten cities. Um, And it was a place that was, in terms of economy, very, very vibrant. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. Now we also know from Matthew's gospel only, both Luke and Mark focus on the man that we call Legion, but Matthew indicates there were two 
demon-possessed men who were there who met Jesus. It's just that Mark and Luke focus on only the one who is speaking, the man that we call um, Legion. Of, that, of him, he said, this man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him any more, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. Now, it's hard for us to even begin to imagine the terror in this man's life. We know that Mary Magdalene was inhabited by seven demons that Jesus cast out. Imagine, we're going to later find out this man has a lot more, probably as many as 2,000 demons in him. You can imagine how difficult it was, but he had superhuman strength. And he literally terrorized the entire ten cities, and people finally left him alone. They tried their best at first to control him. People would take charge of him, and they would chain up. He would sit there and get chained up, and then as soon as they were done, he'd break the chains and the irons around his feet as well. He was so violent that people had long ago started avoiding him and where he was altogether. Now, I'm going to state something that's obvious. Tombs are not nice places to live. Demon-possessed people, for whatever their reasons, and we're not given a lot of explanations in this story, but demon-possessed people often find their way to tombs or to cemeteries. Evidently, that's where they like or need to be. This man would often howl at night, cut himself with sharp stones. Demon-possessed people are often suicidal, and as I said a moment ago, they possess great strength, superhuman strength. All of that to say is you don't want to mess with demon-possessed people. You will encounter them from time to time. But this isn't something to be taken lightly. And certainly, unless you're walking with Jesus, I tell you all the time, just be with Jesus. The demons are afraid of Jesus. They're not afraid of you at all. And we take such a cavalier approach to demon possession. And we think, well, I command you. I take authority over you. We have no authority over the demon world. Our only protection is being with Jesus. And so this is something that we have to be careful of. It's something, as I said, that isn't fun at all. It's no laughing matter, and it can be dangerous to encounter demon-possessed people if you're not equipped to do so. And by being equipped, I don't mean there's some special calling to cast out demons. We can all do it. However, again, I repeat, we've got to be walking in the Spirit because it's the power that raised Christ from the dead that the demons will shudder at. No power that you have or I have. We need to understand that I have encountered demons on several occasions. It's something that I never want to do again, although it's likely that I will. When you're out in the streets, when you're telling people about Jesus, that's just the way it is. You don't have to be afraid, but you do have to be on guard. You have to be careful. Be sure that you're with Jesus. Now, I also want you to note, and this is primarily for parents Please note that Legion cut himself. Whenever you see self-mutilation, it is always the devil who is inspiring it. Now, if you've got children that cut themselves, I'm not saying they're possessed by a devil. So don't misunderstand that. However, the devil is trying through the cutting. He's trying to get a stronghold in your kids, and you need to be careful. When you see evidence of cutting, it's something that needs to be taken care of quickly. It's something that you need to take very seriously. Don't listen to your children and say, oh, well, it just happened once. No, pay attention to it. Come to church. Get some counseling. But please, please, please be watchful over that. Now, another thing that I want to say about demon possession today is that it's very much still in existence today. Now, in the United States, in the West, in fact, we hide it pretty well. We have demon-possessed people locked up in institutions. Um, we, We don't see it a lot outwardly like they do in other countries. And that's because Jesus is everywhere here. We've got uh, so many believers, the, the word of God is everywhere. So there's a lot of light here, and demons don't like to be where there's light. However, they're still here, and demon possession isn't some 
made up story from ancient history. Demon possession is very much in existence today. Mental institutions are filled with demon possessed people. Nursing homes. I've shared with you in the past some stories about demon possession in the nursing homes that Paula and I ministered in. Homeless populations. You'll see people all the time, people with with severe drug backgrounds are often now demon-possessed. So they're still here. This isn't an old story that has no value for us. That's how important it is. The only hope for Legion, the only hope for demon-possessed people in the year 2022 is Jesus Christ, period. There's no other answer. Not medication. Not psychology, just Jesus. Well, of Legion, it says, verse 6, When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Swear to God that you won't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. Now, obviously, and this occurs throughout the gospel accounts, Jesus is not trying to draw attention to his power. Jesus is there to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom of God. And so the demons would always be there to interrupt, and he would always tell them to be quiet. He would refuse to allow them to speak. So evidently, as soon as he saw this man we call Legion, evidently Jesus said, come out, evil spirit, and this was the demon's response. Now, I told you last week, in our Bible study, that humans are the only things that disobey God. Animals obeyed him. The wind and the waves obeyed him. The demons always obey him. They hate him, and they don't want to, but they always obey him. It's only we humans who take the liberty of exercising our free will to be disobedient. And so doing, we're quenching the work of the Spirit, the very Spirit that we need if we encounter demon-possessed people. Now, one of the ways that we know someone is demon-possessed is that the personality of the demon comes through the host. When you're talking to somebody who's demon-possessed, almost never are you actually speaking to the person because the demons are the ones in control. They'll have altered voices, Sometimes they will demonstrate supernatural strength. In this case, it is the demon speaking through the man we call Legion and not Legion himself. One of the things, by the way, you want to do if you encounter demon-possessed people is you need to be prayerful about getting an opportunity to speak to the host. And God will do that for you almost always. And you'll have just a few moments where you can say, look, I I know the pain you're in. But what you need to do is receive Jesus Christ. Are you willing to do that? And the demons will go crazy, but at the same time, you'll be able to speak to the person, but then the demons will come roaring back. You don't want to cast the demon out of somebody who doesn't want to receive Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if you do that, the demon will leave that one, go get seven demons more powerful than the original demon, and if he's coming back, he finds the house empty, meaning no Holy Spirit living in there, then the Last situation will be worse than the first. The demons knew exactly who Jesus was. He knew They knew their ultimate destiny. It's sort of a weird way of saying that even the demons have faith in God. Now, one other thought about demon possession, and this is important for all of us to understand because there's so much bad teaching. Christians cannot be demon possessed. If you are born again and the Spirit of God lives in you, a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance, Paul says. You cannot be demon-possessed, and there's bad teaching, deliverance ministries, uh, I cast the demon of lust out or the demon of this or the demon of that. God won't share his space. So if you're truly born again, you cannot be demon-possessed in spite of what you've heard bad teachers say. Please understand that God will not share you with demons if, in fact, you belong to him. Now, certainly, the demons will oppress us. They will huff and they will puff and they will try to blow our house down. They will try to keep us in a continual state of fear. But that's all they can do. And it's best in cases like that, when the enemy is bothering you, it's best just to say, you know, I'm going to quote Vanessa, talk to the hand. 
I'm hanging out with Jesus. Jesus, you take care of them. I want to spend my time with you. That's always the best approach with demon possessions. What do darkness and light have in common, Paul asks, and the answer is absolutely nothing. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? Now Jesus knew his name, but he asked what his name was because remember, there's a crowd around Jesus, and Jews superstitiously believed that you couldn't command a demon to do anything without first learning his name. So what Jesus is doing, he's saying, what is your name? He's playing to the crowd around him. Remember, this is all by design, and it's going to be followed by one of the best action sermon illustrations in the history of our world. What is your name? Jesus asked. My name is Legion, for we are many. Now that the demons identify themselves as Legion is important to our story. Some believe that the reference was to a specific number. They knew, Jews did, that a Roman legion consisted of 6,000 armed men. I don't really believe that this is intended to imply that there were 6,000 demons. Again, later we find out there were at least 2,000. I don't think the intent there is anything more than there is a lot of demons. And this is a man who's in trouble. We remember, as I said earlier, Mary Magdalene had seven demons and her life was unthinkably difficult. Well, how much more so with this man called Legion. Verse 10 says, And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. Verse 10, verse 17 both indicate that the devil had a stronghold in this region, and that would be why the storm came up. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the region. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, Send us among the pigs. Allow us to go into them. Now, for no particular reason, this kind of stuff interests me. There are no reasons nor explanations given why demons don't want to be disembodied. I mean, would you want to go into a herd of pigs? So we get no explanation. It's just the fact they don't like to be disembodied. Evidently, they can't do their evil without being embodied. And evidently, even being uh, embodied in a pig is better than not having a body. So again, there's no explanation. That's just something that's very clear from the teaching. What is not clear is verse 13. Jesus gave them permission And the evil spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Now, I have no idea why Jesus gave them permission. We would think that the demons would ask him to do something. He would say, no, get away from me. Be cast into the abyss. But that's not what he did. And then as you read this more, and you imagine the scene around, you start to get an idea of what Jesus was doing here. This was going to be one of Jesus' what I call his action sermons. The devil, Jesus will prove, came to steal, to kill, and destroy. Jesus said that in John chapter 10, verse 10. And now he's in the city where this is a stronghold of the devil. And he wants to demonstrate to all the people watching him, this huge crowd, that this is exactly the devil's intent to all of us. Now, every time I'm talking to a group of Christians, I'm aware that there's always a bunch of people that really don't believe in the devil. You know, it's more like mythology, you know, I don't really believe in that kind of stuff. You guys watch Star Trek. If you are interested at all in that kind of stuff, you got to believe in the devil. He's real, and his only intent towards you is to destroy you. The devil is merciless. He is without even an ounce of sympathy or empathy. When he gets you down and you think you can't take any more, you think he's going to lighten up, and the answer is no. That's when he's going to come in for the kill. He wants to destroy you. He wants to ensure that no fruit comes from your life. And he has a lot of tools at his disposal, too many for us to talk about him in our time together this morning. But Jesus is going to say, just watch this, and I'll show you what the devil's intent really is. Now, when the pigs ran off the cliff and committed, and I'll apologize for this in advance, they committed suicide. (laughs) When they did that, 
Everyone in the crowd, in this area where Satan had a stronghold, every single man and woman could see for themselves what the devil's intent was. You think, at least we'd think they ought to be grateful. Well, thanks for the warning. Not so. Look at verse 14. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed. This is the first time they'd seen him with clothes. Dressed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Now, based on what we read earlier, you'd think they'd be relieved. Somebody finally got that man something to wear. <laughs> and he's in his right mind. I could actually have a conversation with him. There's nothing left to be afraid of, but that's not at all how they responded. The most important lesson that we can learn from Legion is this one. He had been completely bound by these demons. And now, for the first time, he was set completely free. The Apostle Paul writes that you and I, before Christ, were slaves to sin. But we too have been set free, no longer bound by sin. What that means isn't that you're not going to sin, but what it means always is that you don't have to sin anymore. I remember what my life was like before Christ. My birthday in the Lord was, was this, this past week, 31 years. And I remember the old Ron. I wasn't demon-possessed, but my life was filled with pain and misery, and I, I made everybody around me miserable as well. And I remember what it was like. But I also remember, and have never forgotten in 31 years, what it was like the moment Jesus came into my heart and set me free. Ron the Jerk had become Ron who wanted people to care about him and like him. I was Ron who wanted to tell everybody about this Jesus that I just met. And people would look at me and say, wow, you, you've really changed. That's an amazing thing. You know, physically we change. The old is gone. The new has come. We're no longer carrying those burdens. Why? Because we finally are in our right mind. And if you're here today and you're not a born-again Christian, you may think you're in your right mind, but you're not. You're being influenced by a world which is influenced by the devil. And they're convincing you that, oh, this stuff doesn't really make sense. It doesn't really matter. You're okay the way you are. Remember, you can't stop sinning because you don't want to stop sinning. And Jesus is going to offer you in just a few minutes the opportunity to be set completely free. Legion's hope is also our hope. Unfortunately, the people in the Gadarenes didn't respond. Verse 16. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told, him about, or told about the pigs as well. This is the worst statement in the whole chapter, the whole story. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. I told you earlier that Satan has a stronghold here. And they're pleading with him not to stay. They're not grateful to him for, for setting this man legion in a place where he was no longer a threat to them. All they're worried about is, you've got to get out of here. There's something about darkness that hates the light, and that's exactly what's happening here. Before their very eyes, Jesus proved his power was from God and that they choose to ignore it. And it was all and only because he messed with their money. Remember, this is a Gentile region, largely, and there was a lot of money being made, and Jesus basically affected their bank accounts. And they made a choice. The money is more important than what you want to do for me, Lord. And there's an obvious lesson for all of us, and I don't have to expand on it. Make sure your priorities are in the right place told you it's no fun to teach about demons. These last few verses are a lot of fun. A breath of fresh air, verse 18. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man formerly known as Legion, who had been demon-possessed, begged to go with him. 
Jesus did not let him. Now immediately we think, well, what do you mean, Jesus? That's what you always do. If he came to this church, Legion, he would say, but Jesus, Pastor Ron always says, just be with Jesus. That's what I'm trying to do. I, I, just, I just want to be where you are. I'm so grateful for all that you've done for me. I just want to follow you everywhere. I want to be close to you. And Jesus didn't let him. Isn't that curious? I would think Jesus would say, get in the boat. We're going back over to the other side. Legion would have believed him. But instead, Jesus said, go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. Let me give you the Ron translation of verse 19, Jesus' instructions. He's saying, go home, scatter some seed, and watch it grow. That's the context of this conversation. Jesus has been telling his disciples the parable of the sower. Your job is to go scatter seed. I've been telling you that now for three weeks in a row. Go scatter seed. Just scatter it wherever you go. But, but Lord, I'm wasting it. No, no. Just it doesn't matter where it goes. Just throw seed. Seed being the word of God. And Jesus is telling this man, formerly known as Legion, don't you wish you knew his name? I want to meet him. I want to say, hi, Mark. Hi, Joe. And thank him for what a blessing he's been to us. Sometimes you can't get what you want. But Jesus will give you what you need. You know, it's interesting for me and for Paula. My life was such a mess when we left California. We thought, well, Lord, let us see here. Our family's here. We have friends here family members, extended family here, and we can show them the power of God. And we asked, he said, let us stay there. His answer was no. March 4th, 1994, on the mountain at Bible College, just out of the blue, the Lord just stopped me in my tracks and said, begin to pray for the people of San Antonio, Texas. You guys know the story. We didn't know anybody in Texas. We'd never been to Texas. We didn't want to go to Texas. <laughs> but Jesus said, that's where I'll be waiting for you. But Lord, we could stay here and we could do this and we could, I could start a church here. And he just said, that's where I'll be waiting for you. Legion, conversely, was told to stay where he was and go home. Sometimes, and especially those of you who have really hurt people in your past, especially people that are really close to you, family members and such, sometimes you're going to be the single best demonstration of the power of God in their lives. No matter how they respond, you let your light shine. Because if you let your light shine, they'll see that your God is real and eventually they're going to listen to you. You know what the best part of this story is? Legion was a wonderful evangelist. Every time Jesus comes back to this side of the lake, this area is packed with people to come and see Jesus. Why? Because of Legion. Once a terrorist to the community, and now he's trying to win the whole community to Jesus Christ. Now you know as Jesus would travel through the, the countryside, the word would travel, and as soon as Legion would hear that Jesus was coming to our area, he would get really excited, and then he'd begin to share the word. And every single time, there are literally throngs of people waiting to meet Jesus when he arrives. So many that he can't get away and be away from them. Even in his own hometown of Nazareth, the people wouldn't believe. But because of Legion's testimony, because of his obedience, Jesus left Legion there and Legion was obedient. You ever get mad at God because he won't do what you want to do? 
Well, he gave Legion a life that was rich and full, a life of meaning and purpose, a life that would bear much, much fruit. And this man, formerly known as Legion, whatever his real name is, now he's a rock star. Sometimes, sometimes the people that you hurt the most are going to be the ones who you impact the most when you come to them with the message of Jesus. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and all the people were amazed. Please notice that he joyfully obeyed the Lord even though Jesus didn't let him do what he wanted to do. He simply obeyed. You want to be a rock star? You want to be used by the Lord to lead people to Christ? Just be obedient. Hang out with Jesus and do what he tells you to do and there will be great power in your life and immense fruit will be produced. And when you get to heaven and Jesus looks at you and says, well done, you'll look back at him and you'll say thank you for saying no. And thank you for giving me a life so rich and full. And he'll look at you and say, no, 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 thank you. And you'll just have to agree to disagree. <laughs> Let's pray.